What's up, everybody? Anthony Crudelli here, and welcome to this week's episode of Develop Your Edge. In today's show, we have my good friend and legendary trader, Linda Rashke. I'm going to ask Linda what market she's trading and how she's finding an edge trading those markets. And in my final thoughts, we'll go to the charts. And I'll go over some of the things I'm seeing in the Russell, E-mini S&P, and NASDAQ. But before we get Linda on the line, for all of you ETF and stock traders out there wondering, why should I get into futures? Go to activetrader.cmegroup.com, click Why Futures, and go to these videos, Benefits of Trading Futures. Tons of content in there to learn more about why you should be trading futures. All right, traders, hang tight while we get Linda on the line. Linda, what's going on? Welcome to the show. Well, you picked a crazy day, wild and crazy day. What do you mean what's going on? What market do you want to talk about? Seriously. <laughs> well, let's start off with corn. You put a picture out <laughs> of cornfields the other day. I know you have farms in Chicago and in Florida. Talk to us about that. You know, you pick the one market that's like the least volatile, dull market. And I just got a kick out of that because, you know, we're approaching harvest season and the grains and everything. And so what happens is after the markets close, I always drive over to the farm, which is about a 20 minute drive. I live out in the suburbs, so I have to drive past some cornfields. So I just was tongue in cheek taking a picture and posting it to Twitter once a week. I'm like, corn's looking mighty good. It's going to be a good crop, you know? And then I, I posted uh, a picture of when we uh, did the second cutting of the hay. I'm like, grains are looking good, you know, the wheat and the corn and everything, good growing season. So it's just tongue in cheek on the, on the egg markets. So before we get into the other markets, do you find that by you having the farms or is the reason you have the farms almost like, a meditation for you at the end of every day? You know, <laughs> well, the reason I have the horses is, is, you know, therapeutic. That's for sure. It's my one outlet. It's, you know, it's how I relieve my stress. So, um, I've been doing that for years and, uh, you know, now I just have two locations, Florida for the winter time and up here for the summertime. So, Yes, needed a place to keep the horses. But the one farm up here, it's 80 acres, and we've got uh, 36 stalls and an indoor training ring, and it's a house, and it's a full-fledged operation. So, How much of your time do you really focus on mental edge? We know you focus a lot on technicals and statistical edge. We'll talk about that. But how much on mental edge? I'm not sure what you mean by mental edge. For me, at this point, you know, in my life, I uh, just try to make sure I have things in balance, you know, way yeah. to relieve stress, good night's sleep, eating clean, and, uh, you know, stay positive thinking. And that's, I don't do meditation. I, you know, I mean, that's about it. Yeah, I, I think that we all have our own little way of doing things to find balance. And I think that finding balance is so important, especially for traders that want to be in business for a long time, having balance. You heard it here from Linda Rashke, even she finds time to, to find balance. Now let's talk about the markets. As you said, busy day, but Linda, busiest year we've had in a long time. What markets are you focused on this year? Same markets as always. I trade the domestic futures markets. So I do the metals, the index futures, bonds, currencies, grains, meat, softs. And uh, I like trading the booms a lot. And uh, then I've been doing a little bit more stock trading this year. So there you go. So you're trading a lot of different markets. And I talk about this a lot uh, as me, as an uh, independent discretionary day trader. I've always found that for me, one market, maybe two markets, and maybe one position at max two positions at one time is what I really feel is, is my strength. I, I'm, I'm always focusing, focusing on the next single trade. You trade multiple markets. How do you divvy that up? I mean, how are you deciding which one you're going to trade each individual day, which markets? Talk to us about that. Well, the whole secret comes in the preparation, you know, it's like, and that's also how you relieve stress and anxiety. If you've done your homework and your preparation, everything's just a matter of does it fall into your lap or not, you know, so I have my levels. I know if I want to trade the day with a long side bias or a short side bias. And so it's a matter of get the main idea right. You know, what is the trend for the day? And I find that if I have, you know, six positions on, you know, maybe I'm taking half off, maybe I'm putting on half. Um, 
you know, then it's a much more of a pure numbers game that I've got greater odds of capturing a, uh, a fat trade, you know, a little bit of an outlier, or that just simply means range expansion. So I'm, I'm trying to position myself, where can I get that range expansion? And, um, you know, maybe I get it, maybe I don't. And so, you know, I find that you, on one hand, you might not manage every trade uh, optimally, meaning, you know, you might get out of some early or, you know, the scattershot stuff, but, you know, you'll always catch a tiger by the tail. And, you know, this comes from many, many years ago in the early 90s, you know, uh, I started trading multiple markets when I was doing a volatility breakout system, you know, so it's not like you're trying to day trade in and out of multiple markets. It's like, my rhythm is put the trade on and then look to exit it the next day. And of course, the E-minis are an exception. You've got lots of uh, length of line. So you've got opportunities in both directions. And um, these days, you know, there's so much movement in the morning trend. I mean, you can, you know, just pull off one or two little continuation patterns for short term scalps as well. But, um, you know, I'm sitting there trading one market. So, I mean, you know, just looking for one spot, you got to do something else the rest of the you know, morning session, right? Yeah. And do you feel that with all the different markets you trade, that you trade them all the same? Or do you feel that? No, no, uh, they all okay. have different personalities. Exactly. And, uh, you know, I also have an assistant too. So, I mean, that's another way I can execute so many markets and, and manage things. So like, for example, our stock trades and our option trades we're doing on interactive brokers. I use the Photon platform for the futures. And, um, you know, so we have a little routine. I'm not going to be capturing momentum plays in stocks off the five minute, uh, you know, five minute opening session where a lot of traders like to. But I want to see what's just turning up, having range expansion, holds its gains, you know, at the top of the morning session. And then I'll look to initiate uh, with the intent of holding over through to the next day, you know, if it has met certain conditions. So that's a different time of day for initiating than a lot of time that I'll enter the financial futures. And I, um, I enter a lot of positions in the futures actually in the evening session. So for me, that's the start, you know, the start day, you'll see so many times now the move in, in copper or gold or euro currency can actually happen on Asia's opening. So, um, you know, as long as the uh, sequences are staggered and as long as you have a very consistent process, you know, it's all about the process and the organization. And then it almost becomes automatic. You know, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have a level. Do I see the, the pattern to initiate at that level? That's going to give me a, a, a manageable risk, you know, point. And um, and and then you're it's like playing uh, cards, you know, you're yeah. you're. You're, then you get rid of the bad hands and <laughs> try to capitalize on the good ones. So, well, we know you're very technical, and we do know that you do work on Mental Edge. You have your balance, but if someone were to ask you, Linda, what is Linda Rashke's edge in your trading? Oh boy, you know, I've done so much statistical modeling and all, I'm always trying to model like where is the momentum, you know, what's going to precede the momentum, you know, how's that swing going to come to an end. So a lot of modeling and um, that's what gives you your initial idea. And then I have to say that uh, probably from all my years on the floor in the 80s, I'm, uh, I'm really good at tape reading. I'm really good. That's how I can also watch, you know, 20 markets at once because we had to stand on the floor. We didn't have charts and you're just watching a, you know, quote board with 100 different quotes of all the option series, which is how I got my start. So it's just a different way of processing data. And then I think that really um, my edge is, number one, I ha have the... Uh, the mathematical edge in my favor, okay, the probabilities in my favor from our modeling, but I also have a really good concentration and focus level. So um, I think that's a real edge. You know, I don't have TV, I don't get distracted by too many things. And uh, I think for most traders, if they want to improve their trading, you know, just think about eliminating all these outside distractions and don't, you know, open your email in the morning session and follow people on Twitter and do all that kind of stuff. It's, it's going to take you out of your game. That's, that's really it. Let's talk about the modeling. 
we talked about how each market has their own personality. We definitely agree to that. Walk us through that process for you to do modeling and just pick a market maybe and maybe some of the things that you're looking for and then how that process to begin to develop that statistical edge. So modeling is all about asking questions. You know, it's all about what happens if you break out of the first 15 minute range, you know, what is the percentage of time that you will then trade on the opposite side of that 15 minute range, you know, and what happens if you apply this for each of the session opens, that would be a very simple model. All my models are very simple. Um, you know, most of my modeling is off of daily bars, daily work. So, you know, let's say, for example, you have a pattern that's, you know, a three bar triangle, three bars of price overlap, which, you know, you might say that the market has come into balance. You know, if you have range expansion outside of that formation, what are the odds of overnight follow through? So just really simple stuff, you know. Um, and what I would say is that the difference between the markets is, uh, for example, the meets, you know, are much more prone to make V bottoms on the daily charts, whereas something like the grains can just hit there and land with a thud and base out forever. Um, the financial markets have a little bit of a different personality. Um, you know, weekly and monthly data with currencies is fabulous, you know, but yet yeah, it's a moot issue if you're looking at something like, uh, you know, the meats or, or grains, you know, the cycles are different. Um, so um, some markets definitely trend a lot harder than other markets. You know, there's a lot more play back and forth in certain markets. Um, so for example, all markets share certain common characteristics. For example, I'll look at uh, when we get these trend periods where we start to see what you might call um, higher highs, higher lows in a real steady pattern. Some people call that one time framing. Some people yeah. call it a pure trend. I call it closes on one side of the five SMA for a persistency of trend. So almost every market on my board is going to have a sequence of those, uh, say, for example, nine to 13 occurrences per year. So that's another thing that I model is the frequency of occurrence, you know, and um, and then almost every single market has had a case in its past where it's had 26 closes on one side of the five SMA. So you know that uh, once you get a really super strong trend, how important it is to stay with that trend, um, you know, witness like we've just had in the in the currencies, you know, the dollar sell off or perhaps the silver and gold to the upside. And, and so having done that type of modeling gives you confidence, you know, oh, wow, it's only day 13 on one side of the five SMA. We can go up another 13 more days. You know, let's continue to manage this trade. And so it uh, it just helps you. Uh, you know, see possibilities and probabilities. And then, of course, the market is going to dictate, the price action is going to dictate what really happens. I love how you started that and you said, ask questions. And to me, that you know, is, that's what it is. Yeah. It, it really is because I go back to the beginning of my career. I mean, I was asking all these different traders questions and I started uh, asking myself a lot of different questions and looking at all these different indicators and what's working, what's not working. We all know everything looks like it works sometimes and not everything works all the time. I, I want to go to one other thing that you said that was your edge and you said tape reading. Talk to, talk to us about that. Um, I'm very good. Well, the way that I watch the markets, I'm trading. I'm not. I'm not trading off the charts per se. I have my little quote board, and I trade off net change. So I'm watching the net change, and so something either stops going up or stops going down. So of course there's a chart, and of course you know that you're approaching your level, or perhaps you have a chart formation. And I tend to watch the net change then for either the little bit of, you know, bouncing around that you're starting to trade around one price, meaning that very short term support can come in or, um, you know, seeing the net change. Maybe you'll get that just a little hint of impulse in the opposite direction and then get a chance to enter on the pause. Um, the other thing that's important about tape reading, it's not just watching the price, but understanding 
the overall market tone and dynamics. So um, I'm sure anybody that's been on the floor would relate to this, but for example, volume is a very important component. Now, I never look at volume, but you can tell from the tape if you've got an increase in volume and volatility, and then that's where the real opportunities are. And conversely, you know, just from watching the tape, you can see if it's a light volume noise day, a chop chop day, and uh, no, not to um, number one over trade in those types of conditions, but better yet, to adjust your target or expectation, maybe play for a small scalp only because it's very unlikely that any breakout's going to get any legs in either direction. So these are all just subtle things that I think every trader improves with as you gain experience, you know, and time. So that would be my last edge would just be experience, you know, and that's a part of the learning curve that is difficult to speed up. So if you're a newer trader, it makes it that much more essential that you really do have full concentration and focus, you know, as you go through this early part of the learning curve. Yeah, absolutely. And and final thought before I let you go, experience is something to me is so important. I look at myself and my edge and my trading is I know my strategy obviously better than anybody else, but I, I know the way it trades in different environments, right? Some days I'm going to be really active, some days I'm not. And I really know that coming into the day. I mean, obviously the day can change as it sets up. How do you come in? We, come, we came from a really busy time and then we want to do a slow time. And I think a lot of traders struggle going from a busy environment to a slower environment. I know that I went through this you're doing really good in a busy environment. You set this high watermark. You're trying to make this amount. You're doing really well. You're having some of your best days and all of a sudden, boom, volatility drops and it gets really quiet. How do you adjust or do you adjust your expectations? Talk to us about how you go in to each day and, and, and looking at the environment and, and, and all about that. Yeah, isn't it terrible when you don't get that dopamine squirt anymore, you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, really, that's the thing is that it can be very addicting to yeah. that. You know? And that's the big problem is that when people start to double dip or go to the well too many times, you know, and it's like that game of musical chairs when when the music stops and all of a sudden you're left hung out to dry, you know. So you got to be careful about the double dipping or going back to that well for the same trade too many times. And I mean, lots of these things you just learn the hard way, you know, you yeah, just yeah. learn from experience like, damn it, I've made that mistake, you know, 50 million times. I'm not going to do that again, you know, exactly. or force yourself to get up. And and then other things, I think it, it still is going to come down to that preparation. You know, if I have on my game sheet, okay, exit, you know, this trade, then I, you know, I need to sell into that strength, you know, instead of wanting to hold on because it feels so good because you're long and you have all these open profits, right? But if I tell myself, okay, I have to sell when it's feeling really good and, you know, and there's that little bit of a buy climax there, you know, then, you know, you shut it down and you have to think more about, um, you know, sometimes I actually go and I'll just look at a different market. And that's the nice thing about having lots of different markets to look at. And I adore looking at charts. So once I've taken some things off, uh, my assistant and I, I mean, you know, we go on cruise control, you know, looking at different stock charts and learning about different companies. And oh, my gosh, did you see this goose up in, in uh, Kodak or did you see the CME? Did you see the CME stock come to life today? What's that all about? You know, uh, you know, and, and so we'll just start looking at different markets for fun. Not that we're necessarily trading them, you know, platinum and palladium and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, it keeps it keeps your eye constantly training for the chart formations and thinking along the lines of being technical, 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 technical. So we bounce these things off back and forth, you know, hey, look how the market tested this, you know, swing higher, swing low, or this uh, gap area to the tick. So when a market does that and it just approaches a key level and just falls one tick short or one tick through, 
that is a very technical thing. And that means that there's not a higher time frame driver, you know? So we're always reinforcing our brains. It's like we're little machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, systems are, are in our gray matter upstairs and it never stops, you know, it's, it's always fun. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and for me, it's similar. I don't trade multiple markets like Linda does, but when the market's not giving me what I want, that's when I get some of my best homework done, some of my best research. Linda, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Quickly, plug the book, because the book is awesome. Everybody go and buy that book, Trading Sardines, is awesome. And talk to us a little bit about what it is that you and Damon are doing now. Well, this is kind of, oh, this is a blast, you know, because we both were on the trading floor for years. Damon was on the floor a lot longer than I was. So we, uh, have, you know how it is when you've got the camaraderie and the yep. friendship and different eyes and so forth. So Damon and I have a trading room and what we're doing is we're posting our trades during the day. We're putting up the charts that we we'll look at. We're showing where we're getting in and out or, you know, if we're going to put on a position to hold overnight. And, uh, you know, it's pretty reasonable. It's $285 a month. And, you know, I post my homework at night and we do stock review on Wednesday nights. And, uh, you know, Damon and I have never traded before together. He was my broker for years and years and he ran his technology company. And uh, so this was his way to get back into trading as well. And, you know, he knocks it out of the park with his market profile. I, you know, it's, I, I've actually learned a lot from watching uh, his trades, you know, because I'm so traditional with my bar charts and my momentum oscillators. And, and he's like, yeah, the bonds are a buy right here because they're at a support level. And I'm like, mm, they look kind of heavy to me, you know, and, <laughs> you know, I don't have any really cue. And sure enough, they'll have a nice reaction back up to the little, you know, value area or something like that. So, uh, it's all good fun. You know, we've got a great group. Everybody has experience levels ranging from a year to 45 years. Uh, so there's just, you know, some people just trade stocks, some people trade futures. It's just a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you go to my website, uh, lindarashke.net, I think you'll see something on there under, um, I don't know, it might say members or trading room. I really got to get my act together and get a little bit more savvy with uh, some of these marketing things. But uh, yeah, we got a little core group and we all trade together during the day and we've got four Zoom videos at once, you know, so you can go back and forth. You can see my assistant screen when he, uh, you know, when we're making trades and we have uh, this neural net that we developed, you know, over the last five months for this, for stocks, you know, for our, um, you know, if you want to go long one day and then exit the next day. <laughs> and it's just been kicking ass. But, you know, those are the ones where we uh, we try to put on the trades about half an hour before Europe closes. And uh, then we always exit them on the next morning. And uh, honestly, our win rate's about 95%. But you don't make huge money. You know, you don't make huge money in stocks because the leverage isn't the same. And I'm trying to get a little bit better at these weekly options, but... There's a little bit of a learning curve there, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to get yeah. a little bit more and more into options myself. Linda, it's always great to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm looking forward to you coming back down so we can hang out this winter down in Florida. So, Well, it's not going to happen in August, Anthony. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, but I'll see you this fall. Thank you again so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Have a good weekend. Hang tight, traders. I'll be right back with my final thoughts. 24-7 access to diverse global markets. Right here. That's why I added stock index futures to my trading strategy. Now when I see ups and downs coming, I'm ready. Well played. Why trade with TradeStation? It's innovative, easy to use, and totally freaking sweet. With powerful tools to track and execute your trades and low per trade commissions on stocks, futures, and options. Upgrade your trade at TradeStation.com. Final thoughts for today, traders. Linda's a rock star. I learn something every single time I speak with her. And today solidified something that I've been saying a lot on social media and on these shows over the years. There are no two traders that are the same. I like to focus on one, maybe two markets. And Linda could focus on multiple markets and she's great at it. So what does that tell us as traders? Be true to who you are. Stick to your strengths. 
when developing your own process and strategy. All right, now let's take a look at the charts. Start off today with the Russell. Why? Well, you guys know I like my Bollinger Bands. And why do I like the Bollinger Bands? Because it keeps it so simple for me. It's right in front of me. Right? Is the market breaking out to the upside? Is it breaking up uh, down to the downside? Do I want to be more aggressive, long or short? It just tells me because of a simple process. And what is that? If you haven't caught how I use them in previous episodes, when we're going up, like we're seeing right now in the Russell, and the market takes out that previous peak and we're going up with the Bollinger Band, I'm only looking at this market to be long. Anyway, I use a daily chart on TradeStation. That's where I go to see the direction I want to be more aggressively intraday on a specific market. So right now, after I would say what is about three days ago, uh, once that Russell took out that previous peak, pushed through that resistance level I had with that top Bollinger Band going up, I said, you know what, the Russell's the market I just can't be short. So when I'm looking at it on the day trading side, I'm only looking for long setups. Now I want to go to the NASDAQ because this doesn't look obviously the same at all. And the NASDAQ throughout this year has been the leader to the upside. And that has now shifted a little bit. Obviously the Russell's just basically playing catch up. And now you have the NASDAQ that failed to take out this previous peak, which I talked about, which you saw the Russell exploded through it. And now you have that top Bollinger Band still going up as the NASDAQ's down, well, it's down almost 200 today uh, as I record this. And you look to see that the top Bollinger Band could be starting to get boxed back in. What becomes interesting to me now is that now that the Russell has really taken this upward move uh, really to the next level uh, and the NASDAQ is now coming back down, that's divergence. So as an S&P trader, which is what I focus primarily on, let's go to the ES, that's push and pull now. That's where we're at. So I see a Russell that's screaming higher and you have a NASDAQ now that's retreating a little bit. Now you're gonna have a choppy S&P. So we talk about process all the time on the show. I wanna teach you how I think. I don't wanna tell you what to think. And how I think when I see this exact situation now is I know many of you trade E-mini S&P like I do. The S&P didn't take out that previous peak high that the, uh, like the Russell did. The NASDAQ did not as well. So we look a little bit more like the NASDAQ, but not quite the same. We look a little bit different. The top Bollinger Band is still going up, so I'm still more biased to the long side in the S&P, but I'm going to expect a choppy intraday because we have divergence. Russell's breaking out. NASDAQ is now consolidating and reverting back down. When you look at the S&P, the big boy of all the indices, we're gonna see push and pull. So to me, that's an edge for me to know that going into the day. So I'm gonna trade a little bit smaller. I'm gonna be obviously a little bit more to the bias to the buy side, but expect it to be a little bit bumpy because of what I'm seeing on the daily charts. Now remember traders, if you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Anthony Cardelli and check out Instagram, doing a bunch of different things on Instagram. Definitely more on the mental edge side of things, a little bit different from what I'm doing on Twitter. So be sure to check that out at Anthony C. Crudelli. That's a wrap for today. See you next week.